the preceding lecture i explained demand for environmental products in this lecture you will study about the welfare effects of price change when price of various commodities increases or decreases then it also affect the welfare or utility of the consumers as i already discussed in the preceding lecture that when the price of the product increases then the consumer will reach at the lower level of indifference or lower utility and then in order to keep the utility constant then consumer should be compensated so obviously when price of any product increases that has some impact on the well being of the consumers so in this lecture i will explain you the two concepts one is compensated variation and equivalent variation they are very important to know the impact of change in the price of the product on the welfare of the consumers after understanding these two concepts in case of conventional products then i will also explain you the similar kind of concepts to know how the change in environmental quality affect the welfare of the consumer and these concepts are compensated surplus and equivalent surplus and then we'll sum up the topic utility or welfare of a consumer is affected by the change in the price of various commodities he or she consumes utility is an ordinal measure so the consumer is better off or worse off depending on increase decrease or increase in the price of a product so uh, in economics you have studied cardinal utility approach then ordinal utility approach so uh, it is difficult to quantify utility so utility is actually ordered and i already explained in the previous lecture how we can draw the demand curve for different kinds of products by using the indifference curve so indifference curve shows that the given level of utility can be obtained using different combination of two products the optimum combination is achieved at the point where the slope of indifference curve is equal to the price ratio or slope of price line of the two products higher indifference curve shows higher level of satisfaction or utility and welfare effects of price change can be explained uh, using compensated variation and equivalent variation and uh, we can also explain the welfare effects of environmental change through compensated surplus and equivalent surplus so let me now <coughs> explain you the welfare effect of price change through compensated surplus and equivalent surplus what is compensated surplus it is measured uh, or it measures the net revenue of a planner who must compensate the consumer for a price change after it occurs bringing her back to the utility level at the initial level so when the price of a product increases then consumer's level of utility will decline but uh, if consumer is to be kept neither worse off nor better off then how much additional money is required to be given to the consumer in order to make the consumer neither worse off or nor better off is known as compensated variation it would be negative if the planner would have to pay 
the consumer a positive level of compensation because the price change make her worse off. <coughs> it measures the difference in attaining the initial utility level at the initial and subsequent prices. Compensation takes place after the price so that the compensated variation uses after the change in the price. So, we can easily see that the individual is worse off than the original, but how much worse off. So, when the price of the product <coughs> increases in the market, then consumer is not able to maintain the same level of utility and consumer becomes worse off. Now, issue is how, how much worse off? This how much worse off uh, can be assessed on the basis of compensated variation. So, there is one way we can get an answer to this question by simply asking how much money do we need to give to the individual to compensate him or her for the price rise. So, when price increases, welfare of the consumer goes down, then how much money we should give to the consumer so that the consumer can maintain the same level of utility, same level of welfare that is exactly known through compensated variation. Uh, I can explain this uh, compensated variation through this graph and uh, in this graph we have one indifference curve, initial indifference curve that is u0 represented by utility initial level of utility and equilibrium of the consumer is attained at the point where the slope of price line and price line is m n. The slope of price line is tangent at point A. So, equilibrium or optimization of uh, utility is achieved at the point where the slope of indifference curve is tangent to the slope of price line or price ratio of the two product x1 and x2. Now, <coughs> if the price of the product falls, price of x product falls and the price of x2 remain constant and amount of the money spent on these two products x1 and x2 also remain same. So, there is no change in the income level of the consumer, no change in the price of x2, but price of x declines, falls. And obviously, when the price of x falls, slope of the budget line or price line will change and now new <coughs> budget line is m n 1 which is tangent to the higher level of indifference curve represented by utility 1. And now, the consumer is in equilibrium at point B where the slope of budget line new budget line is tangent to the slope of second indifference curve that is u 1. So, obviously, when the price of the product falls, consumers welfare increase, consumer reach at the higher level of satisfaction. Now, if you want to keep the consumer neither worse off nor better off, then what you have to do? You have to cut down the income of the consumer that can be spent on two products in such a manner that the new price line or compensatory price line is parallel to the M N 1 budget line. Means, price ratio has changed after the decline in the price of the x 1. So, new price ratio is same, but the budget line is parallel to now the new budget line and this compensatory budget line uh, is tangent at point C on the initial level of utility curve. 
So, movement from A to B in this graph is due to change in the price of the product. So, when the price of the product change, welfare of the consumer improves and consumer reach at the higher level of satisfaction. Now, if you reduce the budget of the consumer to be spent on two products or uh, then the new budget line which is parallel to the M n M n 1 line is now tangent to point C. So, movement from B to C is due to the fact that now uh, there is a compensated variation or budget is curtailed in such a manner that the consumers now again reach at the same level of utility. So, consumer is now neither worse off nor better off. So, now how will you measure the compensated variation? So, compensated variation in this graph is represented by the vertical distance shown by P m. So, P m or m p in the graph is compensated surplus and you can easily understand it by C v compensated surplus is old indifference curve, but new price ratio. So, new indifference curve is u 1, old indifference curve is uh, u 0. So, if consumer reach from new indifference curve to u 0 and face the same uh, the new price ratio, then it is called compensated variation. So, m p is the amount. Now, you can see since uh, on the vertical axis uh, we are taking x 2 product. So, uh, by uh, curtailing the budget not only now consumer is in a position to consume less of x 2, but also less of x 1. So, how much quantity now is is reduced that is m p and how much is the price of the x 2. So, m p multiplied by price of f 2 is actually the amount of the money that is known as compensated variation. So, compensated variation is the all indifference curve, but new price ratio. So, all indifference curve is u 0 and now uh, consumer is consuming at point c initially consumer was consuming at point a when price changes shift to b, but now again come back to c. So, movement from b to c is due to the compensated variation. Similarly, you can also explain equivalent variation. Equivalent variation is the adjustment in the income that changes the consumer's utility equal to the level that would occur if the event has not happened. Event here means price increase or decrease or sometimes income may also be taken into consideration. So, suppose uh, the income level of the consumer decline. So, obviously, the welfare level of the consumer decline. So, if uh, the event has happened, how much the income is to be adjusted to keep the utility at a uh, level is measured by equivalent variation. In this case, in the case of a positive income change, such a fall in price equivalent variation would be the increase in income that would keep the consumer the same additional utility that would happen if the price did not fall. So, obviously, if in our example uh, x falls, but if price of x did not fall, then how much additional and consumer want to consume at the u 1, how much additional uh, income is required that is called equivalent variation. So, in case of a negative income change, equivalent variation would be the amount of the income that would be taken away to lower the consumer's utility to the level that would happen to the change uh, if the change has occurred. Now, look, you can see from this graph 
equivalent variation. Graph seems to be same as or appears to be similar as we have discussed in case of compensated variation, but here difference is that uh, in this graph initial equilibrium level is at point A, where uh, the initial indifference curve or utility curve u0 is tangent to the m and budget line. Now, price of x falls, consumer again reach to the high level of satisfaction, high level of welfare at u1. So, movement from a point to b point is due to the change in the price of the product. So, consumer's welfare improves when the price of x commodity falls. Okay. Now, equivalent variation is the new indifference curve at the old price ratio, just opposite. In that case, you can see the initial indifference curve at the new price ratio. So, compensated variation is initial consumer is at the initial indifference curve at the new price ratio, but just opposite is the equivalent variation where the consumer reach at the higher level of indifference curve without change in the price. So, if price of the product change did not happen, how much money is required to reach at the higher level of satisfaction from A to C. So, from A to C, so that is new indifference curve at the old price ratio. Therefore, we shift the original budget line parallel until it is tangent to the new indifference curve at point C. So, movement from so E S in this case is again M P, but if you see the two graphs you will find the difference. Now, uh, M P means the additional income in that case income was reduced, but uh, consumers reach at the high level of satisfaction uh, on the new indifference curve, but old price ratio. So, price ratio is old. So, if you look at the new budget line which is parallel to the M and budget line. So, this compensatory budget line in case of equivalent variation is parallel to the initial budget line and in the previous graph uh, in com uh, compensated surplus, uh, the compensated line price line was parallel to the new price ratio. So, this is uh, basic difference between uh, equivalent variation and compensated variation. You can uh, to understand better, you can see both these concepts together on the same graph. Here in this graph, you can see compensated variation as well as equivalent variation. As I already told you, compensat uh, compensated variation is old indifference curve, but new price ratio. So, old indifference curve, new price ratio. So, in this graph, the point is E2 from E0 to E2 on the same indifference curve consumer is moving from E0 to E2. So, compensated variation is B C. You can compare it uh, from the previous graph, you will see the exactly same thing. Now, the equivalent variation is new indifference curve at the old price ratio. So, old price ratio new indifference curve. So, the now the new line is parallel to the initial budget line. So, movement is from uh, E 1 to E 3. So, that is M B. So, M B is equivalent variation. So, equivalent variation. So, E 0 in this graph is the equilibrium point before change in the price. E 1 is when the price falls. E 2 is compensated variation adjustment and E 3 is equivalent variation adjustment. Okay. Now, 
you can understand the welfare effect of environmental change. So, the same concept can be applied in case of environmental goods and here we are going to introduce compensated surplus and equivalent surplus to explain the welfare effect of change in environmental quality. So, obviously, as I already discussed environmental quality is also a product and when there is a improvement in environment obviously, the consumer can save some money on other conventional goods in order to keep the utility constant. So, how much money is saved that is because of increasing environmental product. Similarly, sometimes there may be deterioration or, or quality of environment may be declined and it also affect the welfare of the consumer. So, consumer may be happy to take some compensation due in lieu of environmental protection. So, if environment is degraded, welfare is degraded also. So, consumer would be willing to take some compensation from the government uh, if environmental quality is de uh, deteriorated or uh, reduced. So, taking these two things into mind, you can explain these two concepts compensated surplus and equivalent surplus. Let me first explain the compensated surplus. The amount of money that would keep the individual at the original level of utility with the change in Q is called compensated surplus. So, amount of money that would keep the individual at the original level of utility with the change in the quantity of environmental product is known as compensated surplus and from this equation you can know the compensated surplus. Here we have the two level of environmental quality Q0 and Q1. So, compensated surplus is equal to when there are two level of environment equal to expenditure function with respect to the PZ this is a conventional product and quantity of environmental product which is initial quantity Q0 and initial level of utility. So, how much money? So, this clearly indicate how much money the consumer is going to spend to achieve the given level of utility and now if the quantity of environment shift from Q0 to Q1, how much amount of the money the consumer is going to spend on Z? The difference between the two is compensatory surplus. Okay? So, uh, while the amount of the money that would move the individual to the new level of utility without change in Q is called equivalent surplus. So, equivalent surplus means environmental quality may not improve, remain same, but utility may increase. So, how much money is required for the customer or consumers? to reach at the higher level of utility without change in environment is called equivalent surplus and that is represented by the equation equivalent surplus is equal to when uh, Q0 or Q1 are the two product expenditure Pz Q0 U1. So, basic difference here is in this case utility is change in the compensated surplus utility is same. So, given level of utility is same, uh, but Q is changed, but in this case utility is changed, but Q remain constant. So, that is called equivalent surplus means how much money is required uh, for the consumers uh, without change in environment to reach at the higher level of indifference curve from U0 to U1 that is called equivalent surplus. Conceptually, these two terms are very similar to compensated and equivalent variation which I already explained you. The reason for using the term surplus, why we are using here this term surplus in studying the 
welfare effect of environmental change is that the consumer is not free to vary the quantity of Q. So, Q is not decided by the consumer. So, Q is fixed or Q is determined by the uh, public institutions like government. So, in all respects the concepts are identical. Now, C S compensated surplus when there are two level of environmental product is the compensating surplus of moving from Q0 to Q1. So, if environmental quality move from Q0 to Q1 and equivalent surplus is similar to E s, uh, but di difference is. So, from these two equation A and B, you can see the difference between the two. In case of uh, compensated surplus, it is a difference between the amount of the money spent by the consumers for given level of utility and initial level of environment minus the amount of the money required by the customers to achieve the given level of utility when there is a change in environmental quality. So, change may be of any direction improvement or deterioration. Equivalent surplus is the amount of the money required for the customer to reach at the higher level of utility from U0 to U1 with the initial level of environmental product minus the amount of the money required for the cust uh, consumer to achieve the given level of utility without change in the environmental quality. So, if the amount of Q that the consumer consumes has been reduced from Q0 to Q1, it means that quality of, of environmental product declines. So, we want to compensate the consumer for the change in Q by giving them an amount of money that bring back them to the same level of utility. This is the compensated surplus defined in equation A as the difference in the income needed to achieve the old level of utility at the old quantity. So, obviously, uh, here the amount of money spent on the Z product by the consumers when the utility is given U0 and quantity of environmental product is Q0 and the income needed to keep the same level of utility at the new quantity where Q0 is moved or shift to Q1, but utility remain constant. Consumer surplus can be either a willingness to pay or willingness to accept compensation. So, these two uh, concepts are used and individual's willingness to pay for a change in environmental quality is based on the theory of rational choice and is therefore, a consistent estimate of preferences. Individual choice of all the market goods and services is constant by the fixed monetary income and the prices of these goods and services and uh, utility is maximized subject to income constants. So, that is what uh, we study in microeconomics that uh, um, budget is constant with the given budget and uh, non prices of the product. Uh, we have to take rational choice how much to consume different kinds of products. So, obviously, Q0 is fixed level of environmental goods and uh, the problem is to define the economic values of an increase in the level of environmental goods from Q0 to Q1. Here remember difference in utility cannot be quantified, but you can say in terms of consumer surplus. 
Now, it is uh, uh, from this graph you can easily understand the two concept compensated surplus and equivalent surplus or when there is a change in the quality of environment, how the change in the quality of environment is affecting the consumer welfare can be explained in terms of compensated surplus and equivalent surplus. I already explained you what is equivalent surplus and what is compensated surplus and uh, difference between the two is that in case of compensated surplus, uh, it is a difference between the amount of money spent on the conventional product for achieving the given level of utility when there is no change in the environmental quality minus the amount of the money spent by the consumer on Z product or conventional product for the given level of utility when there is a change in environmental quality. Just opposite is <coughs> equivalent surplus that is equal to amount of the money spent by the consumer on conventional product when <coughs> environment quality is not changed, but consumer reach at the higher level of welfare from the initial level minus the amount of the money that is required <coughs> for the customer or consumer to achieve the given level of utility with the given level of quantity. So, okay, uh, now you can see from this graph that on <coughs> vertical axis we are measuring the conventional product say x and on uh, the that, that is the on horizontal axis we are measuring the environmental product say q. A starting point on utility curve is A that is actually the equilibrium point where uh, this entire budget is spent by the consumer on X product and uh, the consumption of X here is fixed and individual utility when increases from uh, U0 to U1, then consumer reach from A point to B point. So, now there are two approaches to quantify here how much the compensation should be given and how much is the equivalent surplus. Here what is the maximum amount C or he is willing to pay to secure the change from Q0 to Q1. So, uh, in that case the individual would be willing to make the goods X to reach at the original utility U0 from B to C. Actually, uh, here movement from B to C, uh, A to B is an improvement in the welfare, but if you want to keep the utility constant under new quantity that is Q1, then you have to move on the same level of utility from B to C. So, movement from B to C is compensating surplus. So, compensated surplus is the movement of the consumer from B to C and equivalent surplus is what is the maximum compensation the individual is willing to accept to forego the increase in environmental goods. So, if there is no improvement in environment, how much consumer is willing to take as a compensation that is called equivalent surplus and that is from A to D. So, consumer will again reach at the higher level of satisfaction. So, here if you look at these two equations, you can easily understand that in case of equivalent surplus, consumer move from A to D because here uh, 
uh, the the equivalent surplus is the difference between how much amount of the money the consumer is spending on x product in this graph to reach at u1 without change in environmental quality minus how much amount of the money is required by the consumer to remain at the same level of utility u0 without change in q so that is obviously ad so ad is the vertical distance that can be known as compensated surplus now these things can also be compare with the expenditure that yield utility u1 at the original quantity without expenditure necessary to yield u0 at the original quantity i already explain you all these things uh, we can also explain this with an example suppose a person x lives in a house close to the ocean with only a vacant field between him and the ocean but that vacant field is owned by y person and now y person want to construct house so if y person want to construct a house on this vacant plot then c weaving of x will be obstructed so obviously the utility of x person will decline so how much x is willing to pay compensation to y not to construct house if ownership of construction house lies with y is one way to understand the things and second is if in a in a city law does not permit to construct a house which obstruct the viewing of others then y will be willing to pay some compensation to x <coughs> so how much this can be actually known so clearly <coughs> x would be willing to pay an amount such that his income after payment and with a clear view of the ocean results the same utility as his income without payment and without the view so this is called equivalent surplus x actually will be indifferent between paying this amount to prevent the loss of the view and not paying but losing the view so another way of looking at the value would be if the town x lives in has laws that prohibit construction that blocks another's view without permission of the viewing party then what will happen if y want to build his house he has to pay x for that right how much would he have to pay to x he would have to pay the amount of the money so that x utility with the payment but without viewing is the same as with no payment but no blocked view and this is actually the compensated surplus so compensated surplus or equivalent surplus can be explained uh, by using this example uh, now let me just conclude this lecture in this lecture i explain indifference curve how indifference curve can be used to optimize the utility of a consumer when consumer is facing a given price line and uh, the utility is maximized at the point where the slope of the indifference curve is tangent to the price ratio of the two products then i also explain compensated variation and equivalent variation 
and uh, these two concepts are used to assess the effects of price change on the welfare of the consumer. But since uh, we are studying environmental economics, so similar kind of concepts can be applied uh, to know how the environmental change affect the welfare of the society uh, or welfare of the consumers. So, uh, so here we introduce two concepts compensated surplus and equivalent surplus and we have made a detailed discussion on uh, what are these surpluses and how uh, they are affecting the welfare of the consumer. Thank you very much.